With your layout plan completed, you're ready to install on the roof. Here are a few general rules to follow when installing AP Systems microinverters. 1. Save yourself setup time with the ECU gateway by plugging it in and connecting it to the homeowner's Wi-Fi first thing. This gives the gateway a chance to download and install any available updates while you install the array. See more tips and ECU setup instructions in the ECUR video series on AP Systems YouTube channel, youtube.com slash AP Systems Solar. 2. Never carry the microinverters by the cable. This could unseat the cable from the microinverter and cause the inverter not to function or to function improperly. 3. Do not carry the microinverters by the mounting bracket as the grounding washer may cause injury. 4. Microinverters should be attached to the rack rails and not directly to the PV module frame. 5. The microinverters should always be fully covered beneath a single PV module. While the microinverters are NEMA 6 IP67 rated, as a good rule of thumb, there should never be any part of the microinverter exposed or placed under the joint of two or more PV modules, where water might pass between modules and contact the inverter. 6. This rule also applies to connectors, such as DC and AC extension cable connections. These connections should be under PV modules whenever possible. 7. Be sure the microinverters have at least 3 quarters of an inch or 2 centimeters space between the roof and the microinverter to allow for proper airflow. 8. When connecting microinverters to the trunk cable, Listen for the audible click from each side of the connector, which tells you the connector is fully seated in the terminal. Once your racking is installed, and with your safety gear in place, mark the inverter placement on the racks where the units will be mounted. Remember to position the inverter completely under the PV module. Lay out your trunk cable to ensure the terminals are positioned correctly with each inverter. Using fastener hardware recommended by your racking provider, mount the microinverters to the rails with a socket wrench or drill with a socket attachment and confirm the spacing for proper airflow. Both QS1 and YC600 microinverters have a built-in ground wire within the cable. However, be sure to check if external grounding is required for installations in your region. Remember, your installation must comply with all local regulations and compliance standards. Place the microinverter AC cable connectors into their respective trunk cable terminals. Listen for the audible click, which tells you a sealed connection has been made. If you need to disconnect a microinverter from the trunk cable, use the AP Systems Disconnect tool. Simply insert the tool fully and pull the connector out of the terminal. After all connections are made, Place an AC end cap on the bare end of any trunk cable and use terminal caps to seal any unused terminals. Once the microinverters are connected to the trunk line, use zip ties to secure the trunk cable to the racking. Be sure not to pull the cables too taut and to allow for some slack. Hot and cold temperatures can stretch and tighten cables so adding a small amount of slack can help to prevent an unintended disconnection. Once ties are completed, be sure to check all connections carefully to ensure none were disconnected in the process. When using connectors, remember to follow the region's color code. For example, in the US, use black for L1, red for L2, and green for protective earth or ground. In Europe, use brown or black for L1, blue for neutral, and green yellow for protective earth. With the microinverters now in place, if you've not yet built your array map, record which PV modules are feeding which microinverters in the array by simply pulling the serial number UID stickers off each unit in series and placing them on the array map in their corresponding position. Once complete, you'll have the layout diagram you need to build your array map in the EMA. You can also complete your layout using the ECU app. However, 
If your site is large or complex, the EMA will allow you more flexibility in arranging PV modules in your array layout. Now it's time to place the PV modules. When you first connect each microinverter, the LED light will flash red once, then show three short green flashes indicating the inverter checkup was successful. The DC connections should first be made with the PV modules adjacent to the microinverter, with the last connections made to the PV module that will cover the microinverter. For example, with the QS1 in either 2x2 or 1x4 layout, connect to the three adjacent PV modules before connecting to the module covering the inverter. Be sure to use MC4 caps to seal any unused DC connectors on the microinverter. Repeat this step for all remaining inverters.